We're going to have a look at how to create or add textures to this drawing without using 3D at all, only just using Photoshop techniques with a, a floor plan out of Archicad. Now we do have the added advantage again of having these backgrounds, um, meaning that we have the white of the furniture, the um, light grey of the floor and the dark grey of the uh, the rock face. And so what I'm going to do to start with is to import a texture. It's very important that these are sort of seamless textures. We'll see what happens if they're not. But let's just drag and drop it in. We'll normally also need to reduce the scale of these in order to fit on the page, but let's just not do that at the moment. Let's just see how it looks. And we're going to just copy this, lay a new layer by copy. And we're going to merge them together. Now we want to try to have as little um, mapping as possible or tiling as possible. So we don't want to have too much of that to begin with. Now how do I cut this to the room? I could do it the slow way and use a marquee tool for instance. Or of course the fast way is if we've used a color to define its shape, then we can use, or a fill or whatever you want to call it, then we can use that tool, select similar, and I'm selecting all the areas that have this grey. Go back to my um, colour that I, or my texture that I want to use, and I can do this two ways. I could cut out, or I could go, do layer, let's just turn that capacity right on. Layer, new layer via copy, and I can just turn that off. And so very, very easily without having to do too much work, I've got the texture to fit to the page. Now let's do a, a similar sort of thing again. Now we're going to find one that looks like stone. So this requires you to have a decent size library of surfaces to begin with. Nothing in here is going to look fantastically accurate. Let's just use this one. I could also maybe use a gravel or something like that. Uh, pebbles, maybe. And you want something that's going to be quite large or look accurate. I don't have anything here that's going to work brilliantly for me. I could use that. Okay, let's use this one. And again, in this case I'm not going to multiply it, I'm just going to stretch it. You have to be careful with textures. Sometimes they'll look okay if they're not to scale, and sometimes they'll look ridiculous if they're not to scale. Depends on what it's trying to do. So again, I'll do the same thing. Use sorry, use the the rock face fill that I have. Select similar, and then I can layer new layer by copy. Use that to cut. Turn that off, turn that off, and I can play with that later, but already that's sort of working the way that I want it to. Just by using shapes, I could do the same thing with maybe grass. So at the moment I'm just trying to get the surfaces on, I'm not worrying about how they look necessarily. Uh, this is the, this one's pretty good as well, it's very massive. Yeah, let's use that one, drag and drop. Rotate it. This was a texture that I made of a very large area using Earth to map the, like an entire park. So I'm very confident that this is as big as it needs to be. If you're not sure what what, what area you're trying to use, of course, I'm gonna I can send this to the back, and that will help me to find it. Here, I'm going to use the magic wand tool. Sorry, always have to make sure you're on the right layer. And so that's selecting this whole back area. Now it's choosing more than I need to because I'm not using a color this time, but that's fine. 
layer, new layer by copy, turn off the other one. And then of course I can very easily just delete out the areas that I don't want. A couple more times and we'll be finished. Let's go to tiles. use this sandstone one. It's very bright but we'll dull it down. This one we do have a problem in that the scale is too massive so we're going to have to shrink it down so it's a little bit more believable so we just know that we can't get tiles that big. And I'm just going to duplicate these, Control J, Control J, until I've covered all the area that I want to use. And then I'm going to merge them all together, select those merge layers, and then do the same thing. In this case it might be easiest just to use my polygonal lasso tool, because if I use my magic wand, I'll show you what's, what's going to happen, is it's going to select the area where the doors are, and I don't want that to happen. Could just also include the doors by holding down my magic wand button or holding down shift I should say so I can join those all together. I've seen students far too many times not include not include the inside of the doors as part of the thing the curve of the door is just to show the path of the door, it's not to show that the material should be different. Layer new layer by copy. You can turn that off. Great, so now we've got all the surfaces that we want. Now they're not necessarily the way that we want them to look, but we can adjust those. Uh, the first thing that we might want to do is to maybe just reduce their opacity or change their contrast so they're not so vibrant. I'll do that under hue saturation. And make it a bit lighter and a bit duller. just so it's not overpowering my drawing. And now the biggest thing that we need to do is to start to make these look real. And the most important thing to make it look real is to give it life. Now we did that with the 3D views that we had because they had depth. Let's just move that to the top so we can see what we're talking about. They had life. They had shadow based on the sun's light. Now how do we do that? when we are using just normal fills. My preferred method is using the burn and dodge tool. Dodge tool making things lighter, burn tool making things darker. I'm going to turn off my caps lock so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to move into an area where there should be less light. And, and a good way to do that is to just burn around the edges. Now I'm not going to do uh, bright beams coming through the door in this case. I'm just going to work on edges. So back to my burn tool. I'm going to reduce the exposure and I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. And I'm going to, let's just zoom out a little bit to do this. You don't have to be very accurate with this and you can build up slowly. So I'm going to start with the edges of the room. 
And I'm just going to darken the floor around the edges. This does two things. This helps to make it look real in terms of shadows, and it also makes it look a bit more believable in terms of surface area or, or trafficable area. Because once you've stepped on an area, it tends to fade or wear. I'm also going to shade around the bed because around the bed the, the light won't cast so brightly. I can shade around the, the tables because the chairs will cast shadows. I'm going to shade into the kitchen corners because again light won't be able to shine in there so much. Now we're going to have a look at lighting in the next video as well, how to add lighting into the sort of a space. But at the moment we're just adding general shadows. Now again it's not as vibrant as if I was having beams of light shine through and we can look at how to do that next. At the moment I'm just trying to add some depth to the room. We can make our symbol size larger and work on this back area here. Because the further we are from the windows the the darker the area should be, and because there's not much light in coming into this room at all. Um, we've got three different ranges, shadows, midtones, and highlights. You should really spend most of your time probably on the midtones and then work on the shadows and highlights last. And what this is doing is just taking away the the consistency or giving us a bit more inconsistency in the colors which makes it look a lot more believable and we'll do the same thing with these in this case I'll burn the I might need to reduce the size of this now a bit maybe increase the exposure and I'm going to burn the top and leave the bottom a bit lighter Now this is a bit too harsh, so it's looking a bit funny, but I'd spend a bit more time on this and do it a bit more slowly if I cared. Of course, this is a bit odd because it's not going to the extent of my page, so I could stretch that or, or give it a larger size, but that's fine. Great. Right. And grass. Lex because I've been using the burn, let's now use the dodge tool to do the same thing and I will dodge around where the grass, oops, let's change the grass or dodge around where the grass is meeting the tiles again suggesting that the grass gets stepped on more there, it's more worn or maybe it's more nicely cut around the edges We can also use this to um, help give an idea of slope. Great, so we've got that as a start. Let's have a look in the next video at how to create the idea of lights in the space.